Mr. Max uh, Tromsdorf uh, from ISC Fraunhofer, a very renowned uh, uh, solar energy research institution in Germany, uh, to talk about uh, the agro PV situation in Germany. Uh, Max, uh, you are up. Thank you very much, everybody. Um, I hope you can hear me. Uh, yes, uh, we can hear you and we can see the slides. Perfect, that's great. Um, yes, so welcome also from my side again. Um, I mentioned before that our first contact in India was the um, feasibility study we conducted in Maharashtra. Now today I'm gonna present you a little bit um, our research results from Germany. Um, we installed a system in 2016 and you'll find the most important um, points of our research and results in these slides also. Um, so as a short background, um, the situation in Germany similar to many other countries is that there's a huge demand of PV electricity and that's a scenario you will see for 2015 um, where we try to simulate how much PV power we would need to meet our climate goals and it's clear that this will take huge areas which are hardly to get today um, there are more and more people on this planet and land is getting scarce and scarce so um, here you also see that um, regarding the different sources of electricity. Photovoltaic will play the very dominant role in the future. Um, at least from 2050 on, it will probably outperform all other sources of electricity, including wind and nuclear and coal power. Um, but the question is how to get these um, systems installed. Um, here you also see the reason why Photovoltaics will play a major role. Probably most of, the, of you are aware of this development. Prices of PV um, panels just um, fell dramatically during the last 20 years. And so the idea of integrating photovoltaics in yeah, like standard um, environments of our daily living is one important um, approach here at our institute in Germany, Fraunhofer Institute for Solar Energy Systems. And you hear, see here the different opportunities included in um, vehicles and buildings on um, f f seas, on lakes, like with floating PV, integrating it to roads. Um, and one approach, and that's our topic today, included in agricultural scenery. And the reason why agrophotovoltaics is so interesting to compare in this regard is that if you compare the potential um, of these different integrated PV approaches, you clearly see that agrophotovoltaics, here you see figures for Germany, is clearly on the top of the technical potential um, with much more than the, the required power we need for the energy transition here in Germany. Um, that's just a draft how this could look like, maybe you know this picture already. Um, just Briefly, um, the time scale since 2010, where we started our research here in our institute, um, Mr. Tobias Winter already um, sketched a few steps here, um, systems in France and Italy since 2011. Interestingly, Japan was one of the first countries um, with, with uh, implemented a support scheme on agrivoltaics since 2013. And then we already saw, have seen some large systems in China. And since 2017, we are very glad that also one um, European country with France implemented a supporting scheme. And today we yeah, roughly assess the global installed APV capacity to be around 2.4 gigawatt peak. But that's of course depending on what you consider as being agrivoltaics. Here are some um, some concepts, um, you see also the variety, but you've seen also this before. That's how this looked um, in our case in south of Germany at Lake of Constance. And the first step when we started our research was to 
check which crops perform probably well under this partial shade. So um, typical crops that are performing well are here depicted in the blue um, circle. That's vegetables and also veg mainly vegetables which are producing leaves, large leaves. So this appears also pretty logical. If you imagine you are a plant and you're restricted by um, solar insulation, one reaction you could do is just to produce larger surfaces of leaves to well be able to produce more photosynthesis. That's at least how I explain this to myself as not being an agronomist. Then we have a huge um, red circle with um, rather neutral um, crops. And this yellow one, which is rather sun loving, that's the crops which we expect to perform less well under an APV system. So this is also depicted here now on the scale and depending from the depending on the um, solar irradiation, you see on the y axis the biomass production and according to the definition M plus would well respond with an increase in biomass production. Some facts of our research system which we installed, I said it's already 2017. Um, it's just a, um, about one third of a hectare, but which is very special compared to other systems worldwide is that the dimensions were chosen to allow all kind of um, agriculture activities below. That means um, the benchmark here is the full harvester, which almost five meters of vertical clearance um, and also the um, width clearance, which is almost 19 meters here. The four crops we um, explored under the system was clover grass, celery, potatoes and winter wheat. That's a typical crop rotation for um, this organic farming community where we were collaborating with. Um, and I will tell you more about the outcomes of the results. What is very special in this system is that we already installed bifacial panels, which is not yet the standard for APV systems. If you look at the existing, existing plans, but according to our analysis, that's something which is very much recommended, not only for having more light availability for the crops, but also because with this higher vertical clearance and distances between the rows, the albedo from the ground is on average much higher than for ground mounted systems and so in many cases we would expect that having bifacial panels is also um, efficient just from a purely economic point of view, ignoring the crop growth. Um, very special is that we did not um, use any concrete on the ground, that was a clear recommendation from the farmers. So we try to have here what we call a spin anchor system, root-like system, um, where you drill long iron um, pillars, small pillars in the ground, which is nice because it's easily to um, take out again after you don't use the system anymore. Um, yeah, that's the main things here, these key figures. Now coming to the results on the agriculture layer, that's of course the most interesting part of our research um, we performed. You see the results from the first two years. Unfortunately, we don't have the year 2019 available yet. Um, but what you see is in the first year 2017, we have a reduction. Here you see the example for potatoes. It was a reduction about 18%. And in 2018, maybe some of, some of you remember, it was a very hot and dry year. We observed an increase of the yield of potato by around 11%, which is um, also interesting is that the quality of the potatoes changed. Here we have depicted in the yellow, green and blue parts of the bars, the preferred marketable yield for the farmers. And as you can see, the medium sized potatoes were much larger than compared to the reference field. Of course, it's not clear that these results will produce again in other years because it was a very special year, but nevertheless, it shows that 
if you use the effects of this partial shade in a smart way, you can really take benefits from that and also not only increase the um, amount, but also the quality of your products. Here we saw this picture before um, from Tobias Winter, um, which is important to differentiate between the, um, the research result I showed you before and the overall result if we also include um, yield losses due to the mounting structure as we are not able to cultivate all area, even not in this system where we at really large um, pillar distances, there still remains some area surfaces which we can't cultivate. This was in our example around 8%. It's mainly due to the stripes where you can't um, go through with a um, full harvester, there where the pillars are. Um, of course, if you have a manual cultivation of the land, this could be reduced. Nevertheless, even if you account for this decrease, the um, overall yield was still higher for potatoes. Um, yeah, that left, left us with a um, race of land use ratio of um, 83 percent. And that's pretty massive. No, sorry, it was even 86 percent. So, um, this shows us pretty much what could be possible also for um, semi-arid and arid climate zones, which we have also here in India. So we are pretty sure that for um, the right crops and the right locations, we can double this land use um, ratio or land equivalent ratio as we call it. Um, that means you get twice the production as you would have with a mono. Production and these figures, of course, are very promising. Um, important issue is um, the social acceptance. Um, this is probably less the case in India, but it will surely become more and more important. And um, I will just go quickly through this slide because the overall um, result was in our um, workshops with the um, local citizens that they really appreciate this dual land use. And so also here, the perspectives are rather good. Um, crucial question is always the financial viability. And here we have as a rough um, result for a standard two hectare system that we would expect around one third higher cost of agrivoltaics compared to ground mount systems. This you can split up in the capex and opex, which also have um, differences like the capex rise by much more and the operational costs reduce, mainly due to um, shared land cost burden and also cost of weed fighting, which does the farm in, in the case of an APV system so that were the main drivers. Um, important challenge for Germany is that there is no regulation yet. Um, this makes it, of course, much more difficult to handle APV systems. So we also um, look deeper into the question how agrophotovoltaic systems can be well implemented. So we have some nice examples in Japan, in France, and also in the US. Um, but of course, this has to be adapted to each country individually because of the legal background, which um, differs from country to country. And the last topic from um, my side today is a very interesting nexus um, between agrivoltaics and water. And that's also something where we believe that it's a very interesting business case. Um, it's clear that in many areas in India, this potential is um, much higher than in Germany. We saw already this nice um, installation in Cassidy with the rainwater harvesting. Of course, it's very interesting to see this kind of system for elevated system, how this could work. Um, and we right now are developing such a system for a uh, location in Algeria. Maybe we try to have a similar approach, just um, in an elevation for, uh, elevated form. Um, what is very interesting for the case of India, the location where we performed our pre-feasibility study, you see the location um, close to Akula. 
Um, that's the precipitation patterns. Most of you are pretty familiar with it, but for us it was um, interesting to see how unregular the precipitation is distributed over the year. So um, that means four or four and a half a month of very strong rainfalls, and then the rest of the year it's pretty dry and very, very hot. That means it's barely possible to cultivate anything. And this, of course, um, is a very attractive opportunity for rainwater harvesting. If you just take a small share of these um, strong rainfalls during June to September and distribute it to other months, um, you see that the overall available um, rainwater um, would be pretty much um, enough to cultivate almost the whole year if you have an efficient um, drip water irrigation available. Um, that's, um, of course, just a rough assessment, which we did on a quantitative um, analysis of the um, precipitations there at the location and the available panel um, surface area. Um, so we didn't account for any um, evaporation of the water. But nevertheless, I think if you compare these two um, graphs, it's, it's nicely um, illustrates the potential if we distribute the available rainwater from one very strong um, event period to dry seasons. So takeaways um, for today, we see that APV is from a technology point of view already um, ready to market, um, but it very much depends on the legal environment. That's mainly because we have two sectors which are generally, in most countries, very regulated, both the agricultural and the electrical sector. So as long as we don't have any clear legal framework for agrivoltaics, it will be very difficult to see larger projects on a larger scale. Um, the general proof of concept is given. So um, we have to find very individual solutions depending on the kinds of crop you want to grow. That's, I think, a very clear result of our um, research during the last years. Um, and our favorites that we can also recommend for our Indian colleagues are clearly, if you have perennial crops, where you can tailor the APV system to the needs of the crops, also with respect to the investment horizon. So. At the moment where you change the crops frequently, it's always a very average optimization. But if you have long-term um, investment scenario where the investment for the crops also um, fit well to the um, horizon of the PV system, that means 20, 30 years approximately, then it seems to be a very um, nicer um, opportunity to adopt and to optimize the system to the needs of the crops. And there, um, very promising crops are, as I mentioned, um, vegetables, but also berries and fruits, um, mainly because of their uh, perennial character. And to show these effects, of course, it would be nice to see more pilots and more research results, how these um, plants perform, especially with respect to long-term effects. So uh, we are also very curious in our system how we will see how these results will change in the future, because of, um, it's, it's not always clear um, how the system behaves in the long run. Um, and definitely, if you think about climate change and increasing droughts also here in, in Central Europe, the issue of rainwater harvesting will become a more and more important issue. So. I thank you very much. I'm looking forward to all your questions. And I'm now curious to hear um, the next presentations also from Next to Sun and the others. Thank you very much.